Hello and welcome. I'm Peggy. Thank you for letting us be a part of your day. And I have a, a very special person here. And we're going to talk about work, what is required. If you're a young person out there just graduating, what the world may offer for you. And uh, I'm just very pleased to have Jay Blankenship with me now. And uh, he is a regional workforce advisor. It sounds very, very <laughs> dignified and important. And you're here, of course, you, you come to us. You're a, from South Carolina. Yes, and you now make your home here in the upstate. That's correct. Yeah, okay. That's correct. And um, y you come to us by the way of Department of Commerce. Yes, ma'am. I'm the regional workforce advisor for the South Carolina Department of Commerce okay. for Greenville, which means that um, I'm the eyes and ears and the connect point for everything as it relates from K all the way through the end of the funnel, which could be employment, but also addressing gaps and, and, and needs and opportunities that exist within Greenville County. And we have some gaps, don't we? Yes, ma'am, we do. And we some, which is a good thing because then that means there's a need that somebody out there can fill. That is, that is correct. There's a there's a lot of opportunities that are available uh, in South Carolina, and particularly in Greenville. Uh, most may not be aware of it um, as it relates to our young people and, and, and young adults. But there's so many opportunities in terms of um, industry involvement, um, getting engaged in career opportunities, but also the higher education aspects that are that are involved. So there's a plethora of opportunities that are available with um, some great wages, great quality of life. It's, you know, South Carolina is a great place to live. You know, Greenville is 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 busting at the scenes with innovation and, and those type things. And, All uh, you have to do is get behind the wheel of a car and go out, and you wonder where is everybody coming from. That is correct. It's we're just mushrooming. That's correct. And, That's correct. And it's good, but the the opportunities are there. Well, we're coming. We're becoming more of a transient community because of opportunities, um, but also when you look at being a transient community, we want to make sure that our, our young people and our citizens here in South Carolina also understand the opportunities and things that are available um, and the access points. And you know, one of the things that you know, I'd like to talk about today is the opportunities that exist for our, for our community as it relates to the completion of their high school education, but also opportunities that exist between them completing their high school education and opportunities that exist for them to get into college, but opportunities that also exist once they graduate. So your focus a lot is young people. Yes, yes. We want to make sure that our talent pool, especially in this new generation of millennials, have access points and connect points that they're aware of, whether that's them selecting colleges based on location, but most importantly, from my perspective, I like to see young people select um, career opportunities and majors in college based on where those jobs are going to be so they can have a definable career pathway. So if you're looking to live in, let's say, Greenville, South Carolina, some of those opportunities may exist, whether it's skilled trades, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's logistics, transportation, distribution, or it could be nursing, it could be healthcare. There's a lot of opportunities out there. It could be coding. There's a lot of opportunities that are out there that in some cases don't even require those individuals to have a college education and they can still have a great quality of life. So part of my role is also make sure those individuals understand those different connect points so they'll know the proper education that they need, but also where those opportunities exist. Because you want them to fit together, the opportunity and the, and the qualifications of the person. That's correct, because what we want to make sure is, one, either they have the skills that are available or they can utilize one of our resources that we have available to give them the training that they need to get the skills. But most importantly, not only building the soft skills, but the technical skills. And our new generation, um, the importance of understanding how to network, how to not only put your resume out there in front of someone, but how do you make physical contact to, to engage a 30-second soundbite about who you are and what skills that you bring to the table. And I think our young people today, that's one of the challenges that they have because everything's so mobile. Yeah. And it's all innovative. It's all widgets and gidgets and those type things. So we want to make sure that they understand how to use the widgets and gidgets and the innovation, but also be able to make the personal contact as well. And also to present themselves. You know, you talk about workforce readiness. Yes. What they have to have confidence and in, in their skills and That's their correct. abilities to bring to the table. That's correct. When you when we talk about workforce readiness. Let's take the younger population. Okay, what is, oh, let's back up. What okay. is workforce readiness? Workforce readiness means that 
the individual has a definable skill set for the job or the career that they're applying for, but making sure that they have the knowledge and the toolage that are going to be have a greater success. So if their workforce is ready, that means they have met the least the minimum qualifications of the academic requirement, the skill set requirement, but also they need to have a general knowledge of the career path that they're wanting to go into. You know, we talk more in terms of career pathways than we do a job. What we wanted a young person to know is, how do you start at A and then get to B, C, D, E, and F? That way, that person's not just sitting there saying, well, I have a job, but it's just, it's stagnant. We want them to understand that the more education that they receive, more training that they receive, the greater their opportunities it could be within that career ladder, so they have opportunities for upward mobility as well. So now you actually work one-on-one one -on -one with, with young people? Or do you go into classrooms, or how do you do this? It's a, it's a variety of things that I do, um, whether it's working with them one-on-one -on -one or teaming them up with an agency, an organization that helps facilitate that. Um, it's probably the most um, important and vital route because they can understand some of the free resources that we have, let's say, for example, opportunities that they may have at Greenville Tech, opportunities they may have at SC Works, opportunities they may have with Goodwill or other organizations that may be able to facilitate addressing that skills gap but also some of the challenges that they may face. So it's me aligning them with the appropriate organization or entity to help facilitate what it is they're trying to do, whether it's career related or academic. Okay, now, what, are, what do you see out there in the workforce as a necessity? What, what does a young person, or anybody for that matter, need to bring to the table? A high school diploma, a college diploma, what, what do you see as necessary? Well, I, I think we still have in the conversation about the high school diploma versus the college education. I think, it's a, I think it's, a, it's a balance of things. The minimum requirement you really need to have is either a high school diploma okay. or a high school diploma equivalency, which okay. we say in South Carolina. So if you have, that's a minimum. But also in, as it relates to either certifications or certificates, um, a lot of our children or students that are now coming out of high school, they're leaving with certifications. They're leaving with certificates that give them an extra adage of the company knowing this person has a certain skill set. So they've already training. accomplished something even though they were still students. That's correct. That's correct. And you see a lot of the um, organizations that are or businesses now that are given opportunities. I know Mission recently announced a modified apprenticeship program with Greenville County School District where those kids could learn about the culture at Michelin and some of the work things that go even on Even while there. they're in school. Even while they're in school. Because unlike when I was in school where you just got a diploma, now you need to leave with some other additives to yeah, that. Yeah, the world gets more complicated it's all so the It's so competitive. Time. Yeah. And in order for our young people to compete, remember, they're competing globally. <laughs> that was the magic word. Yeah. And so in order for them to compete globally, they need to walk out of the building not only with a high school diploma, but also with some type of skill certification that says, Jay has an understanding of this. So our high school students now, by law, are taking um, WinCRC, which is an assessment, and it tests, it tests their skill and learning ability, whether it's reading for comprehension and things of that nature, so that that employer knows that not only does this person have the minimum requirement of the academic, but they also have these skills. Now, some of the important things that we've got to start teaching our young people are soft skills, how to be on time, you know, how to shake someone's hand, how to look someone's eye, how to work in teams, how to communicate clearly, those type of things. But then also adding those technical skills because a lot of the uh, employment needs that we have now, in particular in advanced manufacturing or diversified manufacturing, is going to require those individuals to have a more diversified skill set, understanding the technical aspects, and in some cases, coding. So they understand that the robots and things that are on the assembly now, now, they may have to have a skill to be able to program those things. Or understand oh. the measurements, how to use micrometers and rulers. And so the math and science is really very important for this age group, especially in the innovative ways, not only in just manufacturing, but you, as we were talking earlier, you look at now, you know, you can order food on your phone. You can mm -hmm. order groceries from a grocery store and then pull up in the parking lot and they bring them out to you. <laughs> so, so technology, we're not going to get away from that. So we've got to have the wherewithal and the intellect within our young people embedded in them to understand all these touch points, in particular in real time, because everything now happens in real time. It seems like the world is spinning 
faster than than it ever has. Because and the requirements are more. That's right. Because as you walk out the door today, something's already changed. And so part of the discussion is how do we align those young people who may not be geared or really have a want or there may be some challenges in getting into higher institutional higher education. So we have what we call middle skill jobs. There's about 11 million middle skill jobs. What that individual middle can Middle school jobs. Middle skill. Middle skill middle jobs. jobs, okay. What that individual basically all they have to have is a high school diploma or a diploma equivalency and along with a certificate or certification they can make anywhere between $30,000, $80,000 a year. But I happen to have a four-year four -year degree, which in those cases, now they're not leaving with debt. They're okay. in the workforce quicker. So there are opportunities out there for, yes, for this. There is. There's a lot of opportunities out there for those middle skill jobs um, for that person. Now, even if you go and get a middle skill job, that doesn't stop a person from being able to go and get their four-year education. Mm -hmm. But what it does is, for example, those middle skill jobs, in a lot of ways, you have companies that have scholars programs. So a selected amount of students can go through a scholars program for a middle skill job, get the first two years of education for free, don't have any debt, they're already employed by the employer. Once they graduate, they're still employed by the employer. Then they can go back on and get their four-year education, complete the last two or three years of that education. So it seems to me like there are more opportunities now than ever before. There's a lot of, a lot of opportunity but the issue is most unaware of those opportunities that exist. And that's part of my role is to help facilitate and share all those opportunities that may be available within Greenville County. So Jay, you go, do you go into the class, classroom and talk to these young people or do you do it one-on-one -on -one, or how do you do this? Well, I go in the classroom, I do uh, uh, speaking engagements, I hold okay. workshops, I hold uh, seminars, I hold conferences. Um, I also go to industry. I, I provide avenues for students to get uh, access to industry tours, uh, higher education tours, help facilitate them understanding how to apply for a job, do our relationships with G. Sherman and other organizations so they know the importance of how to interview, how to, how to do a resume, how to give a 30 second sound bite of who they are and what they're attempting to do. Um, so it's a lot of things that go into what I do to try to help not only students, but all the stakeholders that, that we engage in. Okay, we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be back. And we also have a phone number, which we're going to put up and leave on the screen. So stay with us.